has Wei. This is a dangerous combo. Charisma will be the final pick revealed. Will that be enough though to stop this stampede? A dangerous, a royal, and a poetic victory. Will they be able to topple down the demons and their nightmares and rebuild the long lost throne? It is RRQ and Geek Fam in game number two. One more step from reclaiming their glory up against the Kingslayers who have had their number for four seasons now, all two years that RRQ Hoshi have been living in fear of Geek Fam. Today it might change. Today they start a different tone, a different tune. And looking at the clear speed from Sutsujin, he used the red tree quite early on there to get a bit of a head start. But for Vincent, he is still clearing a lot earlier, but he runs into Idah right here. As we take a look at the emblems for Tenacity for RRQ, Oof. they know what this is about. For Geek Fam though, two Tenacities, and for everyone, they're still looking for Wilderness Blessings for the Festival of Bloods. They're convinced that they can kind of make this long enough that these sustain tools, these mobility tools, will come out useful for them. But Vincent, though, probably spotted a little bit by Tyrant. Oh, of course, Edok is being so much of a pesky threat, pushing away Beloisky and a boy. A boy has to respond to that. Taylor now follows up into that little skirmish that they had, securing that jungle camp. And for Vincent, he's just looking for oh, a, an angle. And here we go, R7, of course, your former XP laner here in MPL ID Extremer. Hey, R7, the legend of RRQ. Now we are seeing him just, you know, watching on the sidelines, but definitely still supporting RRQ. It was one once him on these picks. Let's see his reaction. Ah, there yeah, you go. There you go. R7, Ooh, go, ah, let's go. R7 Quick gets featured twice before Jonathan Liandi gets featured once. Oh, hey, he's the mewing god. <laughs> but yeah, of course, it. Jonathan Liandi still waiting for his appearance. Never. And now the turtle will most likely be fought for as Rins has level four. Maloyski looking for a big half. Oh, there goes the turtle guard. Ooh. Uh huh. Now Vincent walking up. Rins still able to flicker out. Edoc popping the revitalize, trying to get Rins back to some HP. Maloyski. Moving forward, you can see that damage output already. So it's on Eternal, Maloyski forced to flicker out. Tyrant oh! gets the call into work. Eternal Guard, knock him off. Maloyski taken out, and he has sword. The King's calling is locked down. Veldora, unable to use the Infernal Pursuit. Edoc able to escape for a bit, but Veldora finishes through. Now jumps up to Edoc. Oh, doesn't get the kill. No. Finally, though, Eternal will we'll be able to find it. So it's Jin going, but it has Scythe. Veldora. Veldora very low. So it's Jin cannot go for a Terrify at the Cursed Blast from my boy, the Spear. Of destruction, not able to connect Skylar with a blazing duet. Oh, the king's calling the kind. Geek fam, they choose to strike fear. They get the turtle and also the three kills. Veldora was unkillable. It's the big team fight composition that Geek fam is using to, uh, to again shut down RRQ's plan, right? With the very oppressive movement forward. They use the penalty zone, they have Veldora on its very aggressive Fovius, and you're seeing RRQ struggle when they're actually on the receiving end of that damage coming in from Veldora. You can see the sustainability as well. That is why that Fovius is actually a very effective pick that we haven't really seen in MPLID Season 14. Yeah, and so far, I feel like you do get the idea of this Mincitar being picked up. I mean, you have so much disabled to just stop the mobility of the Nolan, maybe, of the Fovius, and even the Moskov, when you do get the King's Calling. But so far, Geek Fam was able still to just uh, pull through and push the back line, or rather the front line of RRQ. And they're still able to win that first fight, but will wow. RRQ still Whoa. survive? Oh, they get that single camp in the gold lane. They got, they got the camp, uh, the, the gold buff mid travel from the Sphere of Misery. So this is Jin waiting on the uh, XP lane. Whoa! Might be a pick. The King's Calling come down. Good stun over Sister Jin. Does he get in time? Get there in time. No, he does not. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Renz assassinated by Vincent. The Battle of the Eternal Guards. There you can see a Skylar. He's going to take a whole lot of damage from Beloisky. They're just bashing away. One by one. RQ again. They fall. They had to lose Renz. And up top, they weren't able to punish Veldora for his overextension. And the King's Calling still not much of a threat. The hands of Geek Fam, especially when you you are such a tanky, you know, beefy boy, you can just walk out. And Iron does have the Thunderbelt now. 
Down with the Thunderbelt will kind of help with this tankiness. But on the, for the most part, Geekon are doing a better job right here of still getting the same attention, the same focus on wins. But now they're winning the team fights, and they're not really allowing Skylar to snowball. So, wins overall for Geekfam, but now Veldora being in the front against Tywin. Go to the stun, Veldora able to jump again with the Infernal Pursuit over the Edoc pins. Getting zoned away by Beloy. The damage output of Geek Fam and Beloy on a comfort pick, it seems, here on the Terizla. Really doing a whole lot of damage to RQ. We saw it earlier, right? The damage per minute, number one for a roamer. So much so. Oh, oh King's, oh, King's calling onto Vincent, who gets caught off guard. Veldora, he jumped into the King's calling. All right. It is, it has expired. Veldora still in front of pursuit now. Onto Sutsujin, he has the enhanced sword. Able to escape now. Terizla penalty zone from Beloy. So we're gonna hammer Sutsujin, might be taken down, but the revitalize is still there. Beloyski gets him down. Now it's gonna be Edoc next in the chopping block. It's now Rinse. Moves forward, has the eternal guard. Doesn't decide oh, to pop it. Avoid! Avoid! Walks forward. Displaces himself. Dyron gets the spear forward. Beloy and Veldora now on the chase. Another infernal pursuit. That's a flicker from Dyron. Can Geek Fam chase? Whoa. Dyron try to go for a hook. No, but King's calling was massive, but Veldora almost with a misplay. He jumps into the Ring of Kings and uh, luckily it expired, so he still is able to survive. Great recovery from Yay! the side of Geek Fam, but finally, oh my God, look at the name, finally! that's not Jonathan, that's Gushin 315-6. <laughs> we are disrespecting Jonathan. If you want to be featured, you take this disrespect, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan, who is this guy? <laughs> Feeding with the Gushin. <laughs> Basic oh. guy Jonathan, default streamer number one. His reaction. He hasn't reacted yet. His reaction. He's, yeah. Yeah. he's gonna realize. He's gonna realize. Oh, Wait. does he realize? The cushion. You can see the mixed he's viewing. What is? <laughs> you can see the mixed feelings in his face. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll fight. I'm thinking he'll up top now. Glorious Glorious back way. Way. not gonna go in just yet. Masako with the abyss walker forward, trying to go for Skyler, unable to do so. Mm -hmm. RQ is struggling a bit more right here, and if the Aurora was a big problem in the previous game, the Vexana is too. Especially because RQ, they survive a lot of these fights on such a small margin that the passive of Vexana, you know, the explosions when you get taken out, it's really kind of amplifying the impact of, of a boy in the middle of these fights. Yep. Aurora, moving forward again. Oh. Two Ooh. time for the two time, now the eternal guard to knock him up. Dyron with a hook over to a boy! Oh, good purify from a boy, walks out of it, gets rid of Dyron. And man, what a play. A boy playing, obviously, with those mechanics of his. Yeah, he's so impactful with the Vexana setting up for Vincent to just jump in. Edoc opens up the glorious pathway. Penalty zone onto three, now flickering back. Rins getting the terrify, no one dare to follow it up. BBB. Again, it gets past his crimes, and he flees away. I'm skating. He's just too tanky, my guy. He took all the damage coming through. If you look at his items, straight for the Queen's Wings. Great itemization, because he doesn't need the defense. He needs the reduction, right? With all the balance, the magic and physical coming in from RRQ. Game fact by the new application, go pay. Vexana is a boy's hero with the second highest win rate since his debut with 18 picks and a 66.67 win rate. So that's, of course, a pretty high order for a boy. And I can take a look at how impactful he has been with the Vexana. Has always been able to set up for his teammates. And now the follow-up is always there. Beloisky with the penalty zone. And then Vincent with the fracture. So much so dealing damage towards RRQ. This Vincentar still unable to really become the solution on stopping the players of Geek Fam in their tracks. Even with a winching lantern, so a boy definitely looking to try and do even more damage. And for Geek Fam, they can win out in the team fights. They can stall out the team fights, more importantly. And they have Masako on the Moskov, which is why. He's just a lot more comfortable here, just farming it out, staying on the far side. Look at RRQ, they're making a maneuver here. Dyron walking along with Skylar. Can they find something and will they treat the Lord for it? Veldoran well, is just waiting in the wings. And now Beloisky might open up the map. Prince is being zoned out. They will probably concede the Lord as Vincent starts it. RRQ, they're still cor corralling around the Lord. Will this be an open fight for them? Oh, that's the Infernal Pursuit. He's opened that up. Good immobilization onto Beloy's huge zone, has penalty zone, eternal guard of Aki oh. down, Valdora picks up the kill, Sutujin tries to do the same, winner crowd coming down, Skyler going for Beloy's keep, Beloy's keep pulled back, spear of destruction, it's oh, onto the back, Skyler assassinated by Masako, Vincent doing the same to Sutujin, and now it's RRQ on the back foot, three members down, Tyron, does he make the hero play, we've seen it against Geek Fan before, Tyron decides no, 
Not right now. Vincent takes the Lord. The king without his sacrifice. And now the kingdom slowly crumbles. How do they deal with this team fighting comp of Geek Fam? Meant to try and scale and get something first. Might have been better to let go of that uh, of that Lord somehow. Because they lost three members once again, losing more resources in the jungle when it comes to farm two. The fact that Valoisky was able to survive for so long means that RQ simply don't have enough damage just yet. Now with the Claude reaching a three item power spike, more damage, more relevance coming in from Skylar, but it's not gonna be enough. Even for uh, Dairon that's serving as a main frontline here with a Thunderbelt, with a Dreadnought armor, he still has to contend with the damage coming in from Vildora and a boy. And that's all magical, by the way. So he's safe from Vincent. That's about it. Yeah, the Fulvius has been problematic. The King's calling. Left unanswered. RRQ waiting still for a moment to pounce. This is the same thing that happened in game number one. They were losing in all departments. Their side lanes, you know, arguably were winning, but still, so much pressure coming in from Geek Fam means that RRQ wasn't able to really reply. But now, will the same thing happen? Will a deja vu again be felt by the Kings? Toward passives here. Already expended for the top and mid lane. Now on the bottom side though, seems like Vincent wants to try and get something extra. Won't be enough. Araki will have defended, but again, that isn't really the most impactful of Lords. Geek Fam though have full control at an 8,000 gold lead. It's getting real tough now for the Kings. This 8,000 gold lead is good for Geek Fam because technically, even if it does go to the late game, yes, Arc, you have ways to scale up. The Minsethar, even the Julian will deal a whole lot of, whole lot of damage. But still, for Geek Fam, it's the same. It's Masako on the Moskov. Mm -hmm. They don't get outscaled, right? Yeah, they don't. They're pretty strong as well. Tanky, he'll build his own by Beloisky. Catching Sutsu Jin, now swinging the hammer just to zone them away from the orange buff. And that, oh, here's a hook over to Beloisky. Now it's done as well. Flickering out the safety. The Eternal Guard coming down. Sutsu Jin dodging away from the fracture as the Eternal Guard there was used as well by Rins just for good measures. Again, if you take a look at how much, you know, how, how important it is for Geek Fam to win out on the smallest of trades, the orange buff. Win a crown. Mm. Win a crown for Skylar. More output potential, technically. Geek Fam needs to be very careful as well, because RRQ, they're trying to play a lot, of, uh, a lot of maneuvers, right? Back and forth, back and forth, baiting in and out, trying to make Geek Fam expend their spells. If Geek Fam Ooh. go for a fight, use the penalty zone, that is the only real engage tool they have. You have to remember, Beloisky the Roamer is the Terizla. If, like earlier, they were able to walk out of it and then re-engage, there's a potential for RRQ to win out on this, because if you look at the composition, RRQ have a lot more ways to go and maneuver around, move forwards and backwards, or even go for flanks. Whereas for Geek Fam, it's about winning that team fight, right? So if they don't really get the team fight that they want, they don't get RRQ to commit on that one team fight, it's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. And now the Lord next on their eyes, but it's RRQ who presumably starts it first just to poke it and maybe bait Geek Fam into thinking that they want to commit. But Dyer with the pull now. Going on to Beloisky. They turn the guard, knocking him out. Penalty zone as well, locking him down. So to Jin now with the rotation. Spear destruction connecting out of Edoc. Vildora jumps in. Revitalize coming out as well. Edoc not able to survive despite that. Infernal pursuit from Vildora. The King's calling comes down. Skyler with the winner, ground and the blazing duet. Not enough to take him down. The Spear of Misery oh. gets him out. But he pins him down with Sutsu Jin. 3, 4, 0. How? Wow, the Kingslayers. Oof. Too much crowd control, man. Eternal Guard. Even Vildora's knock up there, the wave, it just stops everything in its tracks. The fact, the fact that Edoc tried to get out there, he was surviving for so, so long, popped the glorious pathway, it just wasn't enough. He just wasn't allowed to move at all. The second component of shutting down the high loss is that crowd control, and Geek Fam absolutely have RRQ's number on this one. 10,000 gold lead. As RRQ are gonna try and contend to try and defend against a Lord, against a full-on team fight. They're gonna be forced into a bit of a front to back once more, unless they do something crazy, which they already tried, by the way, with the Winter Crown Blazing Duet attempt. This game is looking bleak for RRQ. And then the bigger picture, right? It seems like RRQ, they don't really have anything to counter. You know, Geek Fam's pressure and the threats coming in. They're all stacked up. Valdora still Damn. deathless and Vincent's a large item for now. Penalty zone. Beloy with a penalty zone. Locking him down. Oh, Tyra's gonna be caught. Pops in the King's calling before that. Don't have the Lord's battle with Tyler. Going for the blazing duet. 
that the Lowski buys immortality in time. Skyler, they should hold a lot of damage. Well, Dora pops into vengeance. The Lord is still in the mid lane. At half HP, RQ will be able to deal with it. But Geek Fam take the base turret up top. Skyler, BMI backwards to safety. Vincent hovering over. Beloy has that immortality still. It wasn't popped earlier. Vincent waiting for the moment to actually jump in. Skyler's got to be clinical. Gets one immortality, jumps back, dodges away from the curse blast there. And now the enhanced sword coming down with a crown bot and used by Maloyski already. Masako. Doesn't have the immortality just yet. The waves are coming down. So it's a 10! Knocked and Masako with the spears. Skyler walking forward, blazing duet by Kick Fam Stroll. Why they are the King Slayers. Again, crawling and crawling, spreading terror and fear, striking in the eyes of the kings. The kings calling. Left and answered, not enough to take down their slayers. We were a bit confused with the final pick, the Terizla Rome. 